So I'll give it a few minutes, wait till the room fills up a little bit, and then I will begin. And if also if you notice the chat function not working, uh, we do have a Q&A session at the end. Okay, give it a few more minutes. All right. How's everyone doing? My name is Curtis Richardson. I've been here at Flatiron School almost four years come November, based out in New York City. And some fun facts about me. I'm an avid reader, uh, anime enthusiast. I'm a huge New York Yankee fan. I actually worked at uh, Yankee Stadium my freshman year of college. So it's, it's in my blood. And on today's agenda, we're going to give you a little bit of overview of Flatiron School, um, as well as the four programs that we offer, as well as the admissions process in terms of just what you need to do to be considered a student at Flatiron School. We're going to dive into the career services, as well as the 2020 job reports. If you did want to take a deeper look at the job report, it is more detailed on the website. Um, you can actually dive into that and see some pretty cool data points. And then we'll leave it open for a Q&A session. So Flatiron School's mission statement is to enable the pursuit of a better life through education. That's, that's our bread and butter, right? It's equipping students with the necessary skill set uh, to have a successful career in tech. Now, Flatiron School was founded by Adam and Avi 10 years ago exactly. Um, Adam had a passion for the education. Avi had a passion for teaching. Um, so when they came together, they created this idea of teaching individuals how to have a career as a software engineer. 10 years later, we evolved into having three more disciplines, which are product design, um, data science, as well as cybersecurity engineering. We have two campus locations, New York City and Denver. And then our sister SecureSet Academy also operates campus in Denver and Colorado Springs. And then, like I mentioned, we teach four discipline programs, software engineering, data science, cybersecurity engineering, as well as product design. And then we do have a proven job search framework that has helped thousands of Flatiron School grads land a full-time role in tech. We're actually over 6,000 graduates, so that's pretty cool. And then here are where some of our students have gotten placed. As you can see, it's a lot of big names in tech, um, but it ranges anywhere from banking to insurance. Um, I think it all just comes down to like what you see yourself doing after finishing the program and then having that game plan that your career coach is gonna work with you to ultimately land that job placement for you. Now, we teach our program in two specific disciplines. full-time and part-time. Now, full-time is more geared towards the student who's quitting their job, have less of things on their agenda, can really focus in 15 weeks. It's about 50 to 60 hours a week. So it's really intensive, right? You, you can't really have too many things during that 15-week time frame, if at all, right? So no weddings, no parties. Uh, we do get that a lot. 
uh, and then ultimately you'd finish the program in 15 weeks. It's either in campus at the New York City Denver location or online full time. And then, like I mentioned, you'd finish that program in 15 weeks. And then you do have the part time online option, uh, which is more geared toward the student who has a little bit more of a demanding schedule, uh, works full time, maybe take care of young children, don't have a lot of time in order to commit towards the full time program, but does have 25 hours a week to commit towards the part time program. Cool thing is that it's completely adjustable. Um, in terms of the timeframes uh, and when you're putting your hours on a day-to-day -day basis. So it's not like you're locked in to a particular time frame during the part-time program. And then just to go back to the full-time, it's Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. But like I mentioned with the part-time program, you're not locked into a particular schedule. So you get to really put those hours where you see fit on a day-to-day -day basis. The main thing is just maintaining the 25 hours per week to complete the course in a 10 month time frame. Uh, the curriculum is exactly the same for both of them, full-time or part-time, it's no difference in between the two. And then ultimately you do get the career coaching support at the end of the program. The first program we're gonna talk about today is our software engineering program, which is probably our most popular program. It teaches you how to design, develop, maintain, test, and evaluate websites or computer software. So in short, coding sites that people use every day. And typically, uh, we see our students get job placements as software engineers, uh, junior web developers, junior, excuse me, junior web developers, backend developers, or front-end web developers as well. So typically what happens is you'll connect with that career coach and they'll really sit down once you put together a game plan to really determine what's the best fit for you and what you're really the most excited about pursuing after finishing the program. Over the course of the program, it's taught in five phases. So you're gonna learn the fundamental languages such as JavaScript, HTML, CSS, SQL, Ruby, um, you're going to learn oriented, object-oriented programming, um, and then you're going to learn the frameworks that support some of these languages. So the languages you're going to learn on the back end, such as Ruby, um, the frameworks that support Ruby are going to be Rack, Sinatra, as well as Ruby on Rails. And then the main language you're going to learn on the front end is JavaScript, and the frameworks that support JavaScript, such as React and Redux. Like I mentioned, the program itself is taught into five phases. Each phase has a project that will act as your portfolio, with the last project being a capstone project that will fully demonstrate your ability to build an application, website, or software from the ground up. And the cool thing is that it's going to be completely based off of your own idea, so it's not like we're going to tell you what to create or what to build out. I think that's really the most cool thing about the program, because you really get to explore your own ideas and see that technical skill set come full circle. And here's an example of one of our students. Uh, she built a project, well, a particular program called Money Moon. And what it did, it actually compacted uh, a, a married couple, their finances, where they're spending their money, where they have debt, um, and compacted into graphs that allowed you to track it a little bit more easily. Uh, which is pretty cool, right? In terms of just like, I, I know what it's like to manage finances, especially if you're a married couple, like where's the money going to, what can we, where can we save and what can we cut out? Uh, so that was a pretty cool app to see one of our students create it. And, and to be honest, it was actually created on the same API that Robinhood uses, which is the commission-free exchange investment tool. So it's pretty cool to see our students uh, create the same type of platforms uh, for or, or during our program, which is 15 weeks that you know millions of users use now, such as like Robinhood. So that's pretty cool to see. The next program we're going to talk about is the data science program, um, which uses scientific methods processes, algorithms, as well as systems to extract knowledge and insight from structured and unstructured data. So basically, you're charged with pulling data, organizing the data, really digging into the data and seeing where companies can become a little bit more efficient or effective regarding their software or technology that they're currently using. So in short, analyzing data to solve problems and inform, and inform business decisions. And then typically we see our students get job placements as like data scientists, data engineers, machine learning engineers, 
uh, business intelligence, as well as data analysts as well. And over the course of the program, you're going to dive into Python. That is the main language you're going to see over the course of our data science program. Uh, you're also going to see some SQL. Um, you're going to do a lot of web scraping, data cleaning and manipulation, as well as data visualization. And then you're going to dive into the statistics component. Uh, it is very general math. Uh, I know a lot of our students typically haven't seen math in a while, right? We, we kind of forgot some of the functionalities, uh, but it's general like linear regression, derivatives and statistics. We do provide free resources if you felt like you needed to brush up around some of those concepts. Um, but ultimately there is a math component involved with the data science program. And then once you pass the statistics component, you'll dive into machine learning and then advanced machine learning. Um, and then the program itself capstones, or excuse me, ends with a capstone project in which you'll be able to dive into data that's pretty exciting to you or unique, really figure out the challenges within those data sets and build a project based off of what you found. And then here's uh, an example of a project that one of our students created, um, used the Bechdel test in women in film. Uh, this project's particularly focused on examining how women are represented in film and presented data-driven results uh, for end users with a dashboard that allow users to explore the data the mo that most interests them. So, so in this particular example, um, they dived into women that are directors, writers, and producers and pulled that uh, from all the movies that were taking place during from 1993 to 2018. And just so you know, all of the projects that I'm sharing with you today, they all live on YouTube. So if you wanted to take a deeper dive into those and see the presentations behind them, you can definitely check those out on YouTube. And then also we will send this out as well, just in case you wanted to spend a little bit more time on each slide in the event that I am moving a little too fast. The next program we're gonna dive into uh, is cybersecurity engineering. Now, I know a lot of us have the notion of what a cybersecurity engineer looks like. You're, you're sitting behind a computer, uh, preventing breaches from happening or hacks from happening. Um, in theory, it's much more to that um, in terms of just like finding or looking at data sets and seeing where potential threat actors are coming from, right? You know, a lot of what you're gonna do as a cybersecurity engineer you're gonna take a look at those data sets. You're gonna obviously analyze where to see where, where those potential threat actors are coming from, but you're also gonna develop solutions to prevent those threat actors from infiltrating those data sets. So it's a ton, of, a ton of writing and reporting along with coding to really compact and really have that full, full skill set of really being able to analyze and break down where those data sets are being infiltrated. So in theory, um, cybersecurity engineers the whole focus is the protection of the computer system from the death of or damage to their hardware, software, or electronic data. So in short, protecting systems from cyber hack attacks so people can operate safely. Um, and typically the roles we see our students take up after finishing the program are like cybersecurity engineering roles, um, I've seen operation support roles, um, as well as security engineer, security analyst, as well as security consultants. So a pretty wide range of opportunities. Obviously, the main thing when you do begin the job search is going to take into consideration what you've done professionally up until this point, what skill set you have now, and really just put together the best roadmap for what you see yourself doing after finishing the program. The cybersecurity engineering course is taught a little bit differently compared to our other programs. Like the software engineering and data science program is taught in five phases. The cybersecurity engineering program is taught in eight phases. So you're gonna have eight individual classes that really equip you with that fundamental skill set of being a cybersecurity engineer. Uh, a few classes such as network security, system security, uh, threat intelligence. Python is the main language in the cybersecurity engineering program as well. Uh, and then you're gonna learn application security and penetration testing. Uh, and then the cybersecurity engineering program is gonna cap off with the major capstone project um, where you'll demonstrate applied knowledge from all previous courses. And then ultimately you're gonna culminate it all in a professional level oral and written report that can be used as your portfolio. 
So some of the labs you're going to do is set traps, catch threat actors, real world lab environment with cyber range. And then typically, like we see some of our students taking up these kind of roles, such as a, a penetration tester, network engineer, um, as well as a cybersecurity consultant. A lot of the roles that I've mentioned already, but the penetration tester was the newer role. So having a previous knowledge of pro programming languages, as well as familiarity with Windows, Linux, and Unix operating systems will definitely help you out as you progress throughout this program. And then here's an example of one of our students and a project that they built. Uh, a security operations center allows a company to troubleshoot any threats or intrusions and monitor networks and systems and assets in real time. So you'll really have a portfolio that showcases this ability. So when you do go on job interviews, you're directly going to be able to present that technical skill set and projects that you actually worked on. And then our last and final program that we offer is the product design program. This in particular, the process of identifying a market opportunity, clearly defining the problem, developing a proper solution for that problem and validating solution with real users. So in short, using design research and data to solve problems for a user experience. Um, and then the roles we typically see our students take up on after finishing our program, our product designer roles, UX designer roles, UX researcher, as well as interaction designers. So pretty wide range of opportunities based off of what you're specifically excited about. And the product design course is split into five phases, just like our software engineering and data science program. Um, during the first two phases, you're gonna learn the UX process as well as the UI process. So getting that exposure, becoming a full product designer. And then for the next two phases, you're gonna directly work on projects um, or begin with the project brief and deliver research informed solutions using the product design process. Then learn how to talk about your design choice and communicate users needs to other stakeholders. Uh, so you're gonna work on real live case studies during our first two studio phases to really build out that portfolio. Uh, so in total, there are six projects that you're gonna leave with after finishing the product design program to really add to that portfolio and showcase your ability uh, and how you think about designs as well. And then here's an example of one of our students um, in the project that they use for their capstone. They use Heirloom, which is a company that installs aeroponic and hydroponic technologies for indoor or outdoor use. It automates many of the most tedious tasks involved with growing your own food. Students design the screen for controlling and setting up the sensors and components in the system. So if you can see, like this is a pretty clean design. Yes, uh, the UX projects, particularly the first two studio projects will exemplify real life projects or real life examples from companies. So that's enough about the disciplines for right now. Um, this is what I want you to think about. So as a student, um, I want you to picture yourself as being the person in the middle. The first step is connecting with the missions representative. That's either through submitting an application or scheduling a 10 minute chat. Um, but initially after submitting that application, you'll then get scheduled for an interview. We'll get to learn a little bit more about you as well as connect and really dig into any technical skill set that you do have. And then upon in getting your admitted decision and seeing that you've been admitted and you decide to move forward with enrollment, you're then gonna get a lead instructor as you begin the program. Over the course of the program, you're gonna get a technical coach or a technical mentor who's gonna support that lead instructor. So if you're happening to having any challenges or any difficulties with really understanding the labs of lessons, that's the person that you're gonna be able to connect with. And then after finishing the program, you're gonna get a career coach. And that person is gonna work with you on a one-to-one -one basis, really just putting together that game plan for you to get a job placement. So this can range from 15 weeks or 10 months. 
in terms of just like when you're going to complete the program between the full time or part time program. And that just goes into what I just mentioned. Yeah, um, you write an application, you have an interview, you complete the admissions assessment, which is about 15 minutes. It's about 50 questions, half math based, half logic based. You get your admitted decision. If you're admitted and you decide to move forward with enrollment, there is a $500 deposit that you would need to place to begin enrollment. Um, and then you actually should have access to the prep material now, which also works as the pre-work. The pre-work material itself does need to be completed a week prior to your start date. So you'll work through that as you're getting ready for the beginning of your program. You'll read through the enrollment documents, sign off on all documents necessary, finalize your payment option, and then you're ready to begin on day one, as long as all of those things are completed. Number one, submit a written application. When should you apply? Now, your application is just the first step. You should know you're ready for career change, approximately much time, how much time you'll need to commit each week to the program. So if you're planning to, if you're planning to work a full-time job over the course of the program, really setting that expectation that it's going to require 25 hours out of you each week, maybe more, especially when you're working on those projects. Um, and just really having that expectation that it's gonna require a lot out of you, right? It, it's a reason why it's so many roles open, but not a lot of people doing it because it is gonna be very challenging despite the program that you choose. Um, so what you don't have to know, how to code, how to hack or design or have worked with data. You don't need to come in with any of that experience in order to be successful. You just have to come in with the ability to roll up your sleeves and get to work. So if you have that, like you'll be more than fine and, and you'll really achieve a high level of success here. And then you don't need to know how to exactly pay for the course. We could always talk that through together and really break down what, are, what makes the most sense for you and what payment options work the best for you. Step number two, when you complete the admissions interview. Three, complete the admissions assessment. And then here's an example of how the admissions assessment would work. I'll give you a few minutes just to, or a minute to look at it just so you can get an idea. It's very standardized test taking type questions um, just so you can get a, a quick sample size if you haven't already taken the admissions assessment. Okay. And then you get your admissions decision. So normally that takes anywhere from like one to three business days in terms of when you had your interview for when you should expect to receive your admitted decision. Five, pre-work, which is about 40 hours worth of material for our data science and cyber course. It's about 30 hours for our product design program. And then it's about 60 hours for our software engineering program. So as you can see, you have a Slack channel specifically geared towards pre-work. So if you do find yourself having challenges, you can connect with other students, um, really build that community. That is something that we encourage our students working alongside each other. So you'll have that pre-work channel where you'll be able to connect with other students, uh, get questions answered, as well as just lean on each other for support. But the main thing is that that pre-work would have to be completed a week prior to your start date. Otherwise, you will not be able to start. Now, in terms of how you'll pay for the program, there's generally three different payment options that students choose to decide from. Obviously, the number one is you can pay fully upfront. Uh, the tuition price itself for all programs is $16,900. So you do have to place a $500 deposit if you do decide to move forward with enrollment. So that would just leave a balance of $16,400 that you would need to 
figure out how you're paying for it, whether that's upfront, like I mentioned, just paying that full $16,400 or paying installments. So that's either through 12 monthly payments. So when you do the breakdown for the math, it's like $1,400 a month over that time frame uh, for 12 months. And then the last option would be to finance. Uh, we do work with two lenders, Ascent Funding and Climb Credit. If you're approved for either one of those, the payments are spaced out over 36 months. The monthly payments are usually around $575 a month over that time frame. Ascent Funding does offer an option where you could defer payments. So you would definitely need to take a look at those two lenders in terms of just deciding which one works best for you. Um, just so you know, there is an interest rate associated with that, um, and it does require a credit check. So if you choose financing, just be mindful of the terms for that specific lender. And then we do have scholarships, particularly for diversity initiatives. So an access scholarship for underrepresented groups trying to break into tech. And then we have a Women Take Tech scholarship. So trying to get more women into the tech space. Uh, so we do have scholarships and generally those are for full-time students. Uh, so if you are looking at the full-time program and you fit under that criteria, definitely make sure to ask about scholarships, especially if it applies to you. And then at the end of the program, you're gonna get a career coach, right? The most important thing is to ultimately make that career change into tech. So that's the whole focus of our program. So at the end of the course, you're gonna get a career coach who's gonna work with you on a one-to-one -one basis and just really put together that roadmap for you to get a job placement. So redoing your resume so that it really reflects that technical skill set, doing mock interviews with you so that you're comfortable speaking to that technical skill set. And then they're going to do a technical interview with you as well, because when you do eventually go on job interviews, all of these companies want to see one thing from you. And that one thing is that you can actually code. So we're going to make sure you're feeling comfortable, confident amongst those three things. And then over the course of the program, like I mentioned, you'll have projects to act as your portfolio. So they're going to coach you up to talk about those projects and how they really demonstrate that technical support. Um, and then we do have employer partners. So we have companies that seek out our students. So if it makes sense and, and it matches up to what you want to do and they want to bring you in for an interview, we would definitely set that up for you. So this is the career path in terms of what it would look like for you after finishing the program. You'll meet your coach, resume review, personal branding. So really telling your story. What have you done? What excites you? What, what really got got your your juice pumping in terms of just like really taking this next step career wise um, network and job search right because there are going to be certain action items that you have to do with your career coach to make sure that the job search is successful um, mock uh, mock interview hours with hr so really getting those tough questions to ask preparing you how to answer articulately and really showcasing that technical skill set mock tech interviews like i mentioned when you do eventually go on job interviews all of these companies want to see that you can actually code so we're going to present challenges for you so that way you're feeling comfortable coding under particular time frames and just really building out that environment that allow you to be prepared so when you do begin that job search and then declaring your job search right so what particular roles do you want to go after what what particular titles excite you the most so really putting together that roadmap and then ongoing check-ins, right? Are you doing the steps that your career coach recommended that you do or set for you to do? And then if you do all of that, like you're gonna land a job. We have an 84% job placement rate for our students that finished our program that had successfully got a job search working alongside the career coach. And then now we can open it up to questions. So to Eric first, um, I can send you a copy of the cybersecurity podcast. Um, you should be able to check it out on YouTube, but I can also see if we can send out an email blast as well. Um, I answered the question, time frame full-time online, Eastern time, it's Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday. And then for how to access the results of the assessment, you can't essentially. Uh, so when you connect with your admissions rep, 
they'll tell you how well you did on the score or how well you did on the assessment. Um, so you'll know if you passed or failed when you do connect with the admissions rep. And yes, you're correct. The part-time program is not asynchronous. So you really have a lot of flexibility in terms of where you're putting your hours on a day-to-day -day basis. The lectures are pre-recorded, so you get to reference the lectures as often as you like as you progress throughout the program. Ultimately, um, you do have a live component like guided live study practices that take place Monday through Friday. Um, those are led by your cohort instructor along with other students in your cohort, and those are recorded as well. So if you miss those, you can watch those as soon as they're done. Like the one thing, you, you, well, the few things I would recommend holding true to are those guided live study practices that take place because you're going to get a high level of engagement if you're a part time student there, right? Because most of the time is spent on like a, a case by case basis based off of how your schedule is working for you. Right. So it's not like you need to be in front of the computer screen. So that's where you'll get a high level of engagement attending those guided live study practices. And then you'll have scheduled one on one time with a technical mentor that takes place once every two weeks. And then you could work faster in the part time program. So if you find yourself committing 50 to 60 hours a week, you realistically can complete the course in a full time schedule. Um, but generally, we see students who work full time jobs and do the part time program, like, let's say if you're completely crushing it, like, at most, you'll probably finish it just in between like six to 10 months, um, just based off of how life is, because it's no specific set time where you need to be in front of the computer screen. Um, but I have seen students finish it in that time frame. And in terms of how to ask questions during the program, if it's full time, obviously you're in a virtual classroom. So you get to get questions answered directly right there as you're attending those live lectures. Uh, you'd also have Slack channel available to you and the study guide and the, the study groups that'll take place throughout the course of the week as well for full time. For part time, you have those guided live study practices that take place over the course of the week. And then you have Slack channel that's available to you Monday through Saturday to get questions answered. And then you'd also have one-on-one -on -one time with the technical mentor once every two weeks. And that's specifically for the part-time program. So programs do fill up pretty fast. I, for sure, like right now, back to school season, like this is one of our busiest times. Uh, because everyone is in a rush to go back to school, you know, get aligned with new goals and just really make that career change. And then we do have cutoff dates in terms of when to enroll for a program, uh, because you do have pre-work that has to be completed a week prior to your start date, unless you started the pre-work ahead of time and, you know, you're in the middle of completing it um, closer to a, a cohort deadline, that's probably where we can make an exception, but obviously that's solely dependent on the director of admissions as well as the education team if it is something that's feasible so generally speaking like if you are considering a course you want to give yourself at least three to four weeks ahead of your cohort start date to at least begin um, the application process and even the enrollment process so you can give yourself enough time to work through that pre-work feel confident feel confident excuse me feel confident and comfortable with the concept so that way you're setting yourself up for success because again there's a huge learning curve and you just want to make sure you're as well-rounded as possible as you begin the program. Yes, you are correct. So in terms of how the process works, it goes based off of your application, your interview, and your admissions assessment. So if you do all three of those things correctly and you pass, um, obviously your chances of being admitted into the program are pretty good. Um, but if you fail the assessment, don't necessarily have a good interview, uh, those are things that could obviously prohibit you from being admitted into the program. So you don't need to come in with a solid background of understanding code already at this point. Like we're kind of expecting you to come in uh, fairly new. Obviously, if you had exposure to these concepts, that's great. I think that'll help you all with the learning curve. Uh, but eventually we've seen that even though some students come in with prior coding knowledge versus students who don't come in with prior coding knowledge, eventually everyone is on the same even playing field as they progress throughout the program. So the main thing is that pre-work, that'll generally get everyone prepared in terms of just where you need to be at the start of the program, regardless of having a coding background 
or if you do have a coding background. And then yes, uh, the UX projects are integrated with real companies. Like I mentioned for studio one and studio two phases, like you'll dive into real case studies uh, based off of real companies and build projects based off of that. Um, the schedule for full-time students, the schedule for full-time students ultimately is Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, for software engineering, for data science, it's 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday um, for Eastern Standard Time. So it does vary depending on the program, but for software engineering, it's 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And then for any other program, it's from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So right now within the software engineering program, you're not gonna learn Python, um, but if you wanted to learn Python concepts, like you could take a look at some of the Python material within our data science program, as well as our cybersecurity engineering program to just give yourself some exposure to Python concepts, but it's not like something you'll see over the course of the software engineering program. The main languages are Ruby on the back end and then JavaScript on the front end side of things but you could absolutely plug into some of those free concepts um, on the website. For the software engineering program, there is no technical interviews. Like I mentioned, it's just a general admissions interview and an admissions assessment. That, those two things ultimately determine if you're gonna be admitted into the program. And then the pre-work would ultimately have to be completed. So we do see some students weed out during the pre-work um, in the event if it was a little bit too much for them in terms of just like what they expected coming into the program, but no technical interview needed. So typically the software engineering program full-time cohort in person and online, it typically runs anywhere from like 15 to 20 students. Yes, full-time students do get accounted for holidays. So during the holiday break, if it's Christmas or New Year's or Thanksgiving, that will be honored because if I'm not working, you're definitely not in class during those days. So yes, during holidays, you are a lot at that time. So when you're working on projects for the product design program, it's not like you're directly working with startups or particular companies. Like it, it'll have particular case studies around a particular company. Uh, so not directly one-to-one -one, like taking meetings, but like a case study um, on a particular company. And then you're gonna build the project based off of that. So real life example, just not directly working um, with an actual company. Yes, so like I mentioned, the holidays are allotted during the full-time program. So Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's, you're allotted that time um, during the full-time program. And then Python is taught in our data science and cybersecurity engineering course. As of right now, um, we haven't necessarily thought about, um, well, I, I mean, right now we haven't necessarily thought about, I would say teaching in software engineer per se. I know there is rumblings around it, but for right now, um, we just see that the Ruby uh, backend and JavaScript front end has done you know wonders in terms of just getting students placed, but it is something that we are considering. Uh, but as of right now, Python is not taught in the software engineering program. You'll mainly see it like I, like I mentioned in the data science and cybersecurity engineering program. Honestly, it, it varies in terms of just like where we see uh, most people transferring over. Like I've been here almost four years. I think I've seen pretty much every 
sector a student has come from, from banking to medicine to nonprofits uh, to like being a general cashier at Chipotle. Like I, I've seen it all, I would say. So like in terms of just like the fields, it, it varies. I would say it's very diverse. Um, I think the main common denominator between all those students is just that they have a want for really wanting to pursue a, a career in tech. Um, and then the age, it that ranges too. Like I, I've enrolled a student who was 50 plus. I've enrolled a student who was 18. Like it, it, it ranges like in terms of just like people who are excited about making this change. Um, I would say we probably the average demographic is probably anywhere from like 30 to 40. Um, and that's just me guessing. Um, but I would say just from my experience, that's probably the average demographic. Um, but yeah, we've seen a variety of just different students, age, background, uh, different ages and backgrounds come into the program. So in the event, um, if you miss full time, like it, it's tricky because the, the main thing with the full time program, like the information is just so fast paced that missing a day, like it might feel like missing a week's worth of work. But yes, the lectures are recorded. Um, so in the event, let's say if you, you know, you, you've got a cold for one day and you couldn't really attend class, like the lectures would be recorded or for that day for you to be able to watch. So there are provisions put in place um, if you, you, know, you miss a day, um, but if you're missing any more than a day, that's when it becomes a bigger issue. But yes, if you do miss a day, lectures are recorded, but that is not something I would encourage for the full-time program. Uh, the part-time program, obviously no live lectures, uh, but that gives you a little bit more flexibility in the event you had a little bit more demanding schedule. But yes, for full-time lectures are recorded. No, in-person students only work with each other. Uh, online students work in a separate cohort. So if you're doing in-person full-time or full-time remote, uh, the first four projects for like data science or software engineering are actually group projects. So you'll collaborate with the students within your cohort. So if you're part-time online, like the, the ability you'd have to connect with other students in your cohort, that'll take place during those guided live study practices. So when you did have questions um, or you wanted to form study groups, like it could take place during those guided live study practices for the part-time program. And then there are cases where the instructor will conduct um, group projects or smaller shared screening projects during those guided live study practices. So you can get that collaboration feel during the part-time program, but you'll mainly see collaboration during the full-time program, either in-person or remote. And then, yeah, the breaks are like any holiday. So Thanksgiving, um, you'll get that as a holiday break. Christmas, you'll get that as a holiday break. And then New Year's, you'll get that as a holiday break. Now the specific days, I don't know off the top of my head right now in terms of how long they are, um, but that is something um, we can send out in the event if it is something that you really want it. But yeah, you'll get those holidays off for sure. All right, any more questions? Guess I'll leave it open just a little bit long. Okay, that's one. Can Windows be used for software engineering projects? Yes, Windows can be used for the software engineering program. You just want to make sure that it's pretty up to date in terms of just like your software, um, and then you want to take a look at your gigabytes and your RAM processing speed uh, because in some cases, like the projects, you want to just make sure that. It's, your computer is able to optimize at full speed. Um, but if you want, like we do have a computer requirement document. So you could always check out like how your current computer stacks up to what we expect students coming in with. Yeah, generally, like 
the computer we normally recommend is a MacBook. I mean, just what I've seen, industry trends, like most companies give out MacBooks. But to be honest with you, it's a preference thing. Um, so if you're comfortable with Windows or if you're comfortable with Mac, like just go with the computer that you're most comfortable with. Because the way you want to think about it is whatever computer you do the program with, that's essentially going to be the fundamental block for your professional career. Um, so generally we recommend Macs, but I mean, I've seen students use Windows and, and be pretty much successful. Linux, not so much, I haven't seen, but yeah, either Windows or Mac in terms of just like computers you want to use and you'll be fine. And just so you know, this is recorded, so it will be sent out, obviously, if you wanted to replay it, any anything that you might have missed, as well as the slides, um, if you wanted to review anything. Um, I will throw my information in the chat so you have that if questions came up again after this. Oh, yeah. So in the event if you did the course in person like you're going to be in the classroom monday through friday um, 9 a.m to 6 p.m so it, realistically um, most of the time that you're going to spend throughout the program during the week it will be spent um, or the, i would say the time that you're going to be doing your work most of it will be spent while you're on campus um, obviously like you'll probably take some things home and revisit what you learned throughout the day just to make sure that you're sharp for the next day um, but it's not like you'll take tons of homework home. I would say like the only time where you might take additional work home is during the project phases because you know you're just going to want to make sure that that's on point in the sense of like it's where exactly where you want it to be it's exactly where uh, or it's exactly what instructors are looking for because the projects are like the passing component in terms of just what you need to do to move forward um, through phases if you're in the full-time program. All right. Any any last minute questions from me? Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you all for coming. Um, if there are no other questions, we can probably wrap this up now. Like I mentioned, I just dropped my information in the chat. So if any questions come up, you could always feel free to just give me a call or shoot me an email. Be more than happy to chat on a more individual basis. Um, but what's next? I would say scheduling an introductory chat with our admission team. You can use the Go Once Hub Flatiron Squid Missions. Like you'll be able to see that through the link um, when I do see that, when I do send this out to you all. And then you'd be able to apply to any program through the flatironschool.com slash start link as well. And then we deliver our cur curriculum by attending the virtual events as well as such as this. Um, we do have specific events geared towards discipline. So if you wanted to plug into that, I would absolutely recommend that as well. Um, all events are recorded. So if you want to see any previous event, you can just ask that, ask for that event and we can send it out to you as well. And then thank you all for coming, it was a pleasure.